button. All right, <laughs> Carrie, we're live. Yeah. So Carrie Donatelli again is hanging out with us today. She she spent a little time with us. If y'all remember back in December, I think was it was December, Carrie. It was talking December, maybe the end of November. I want to say it was the beginning of December. Okay, just talking year in tax planning, financial planning, stuff like that. So I asked Carrie to come back again today because she's one of the few people I know who actually gets money and finances and isn't, this is, sounds horrible, isn't completely boring. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't think that sounds terrible at all. <laughs> I used to be a financial advisor and wealth manager and owned a, I owned a wealth management firm. I don't know if I ever told you that. And the um, it's so hard to find people who think with numbers and like can actually carry a good conversation. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so here's what I wanna talk about today with Carrie and, and ask your questions as always, everybody. This is live Q&A, this is open season here. Carrie, I just wanna kinda of hear you talk through our financial choices for 2021, because a lot of us have had a really interesting 2020 year. We may have spent more money we wanted to or maybe not made as much as we wanted to, or maybe we made tons of money and don't quite know how to sort that out. But ultimately, we gotta make really wise choices getting out of a hole or not dipping back in you know, a few years ago, a mentor of mine said, uh, when I first started like making serious money, they, they said the hardest thing to do is not make money. The hardest thing to do is not budget when you don't have money. The hardest thing to do is survive having money. Mm -hmm. So often if we've had a really good year, that can actually become our downfall because we, we lose. You just go crazy. Yeah, you go crazy, you lose connection with reality. Yeah, so anyway, help us kind of get started. What What do we start thinking about to really take action in 2021? Is it budgeting? Is it having a cash reserve? Is it, I, I don't, what is it? I feel like first, the first step is to think about your goals financially, mm -hmm. where you want your business to be. And there's no better time to start making better cash management decisions, better money decisions than the beginning of a year. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to make a change, now's the time to do it. And some of these are behavioral changes but some is just a mindset change. So if you shift your mindset, I mean, so many of us that the human, the natural human behavior says that we spend what we make. And actually a I little more than what we make, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's all I, I've heard from tons of people, it's all relative and I'm, you know, it is what it is. And I'm I'm I don't I don't agree with that. So mm. we have to kind of institute a smaller plates mentality so that you don't have this giant bucket of money. Um, and my goal is to further like compartmentalize your cash flow mm. so that you're still saving for taxes. So you're reaching your financial savings goals so that you're paying yourself better mm -hmm. and you're still able to pay your bills. I so like at the end of the day, it comes down to better cash management. So, I mean, a lot of us have had terrible years in 2021 or 2020 mm -hmm. and we want to kind of change that. So, um, we need to pivot our mindset and kind of embrace a new normal. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we've all kind of done that with the masks and the distancing and all of that. But, you know, I've had, I work with a lot of estheticians and like luxury service providers who've had to shut down. So we've pivoted our mindset and kind of started thinking outside the box as far as different ways to make money, mm -hmm. how to maximize your cash flow, still be, pay those bills, stay, still pay yourself even with a lowered um, income. Okay, okay, so now I got questions popping up in my head. Andrew, by the way, welcome. Welcome everybody else, great to see everybody. So, got credit cards, right? Let's just let's yes. play a scenario out here. Most of us had credit cards before 2020, but mm -hmm. it just got worse in 2020. Yeah. Credit cards, cash is still tight, getting a little better. Mm -hmm. Do, do we start saving a little money and just putting it back for a rainy day or do we pay down the credit card balances or, or do we, I mean, if, if I could save a hundred bucks a month, is that enough? I'm just trying to make a scenario up here. Like how do we, right. where do we go first? You said start with goals. I mean, what are the goals? Look right. like? like well, goals? for right now, I'm, I'm a newly certified profit first coach. So profit first at a high level is, a cash management system. Okay. So you can do it all. You can still save for a rainy day and you can take some of that money and pay down. I mean, some of the, the profit first mentality is to pay down those higher interest debts first and, 
you know, not say, oh, I've paid that off. I can take that money and do something else with it. No, you lump it on to the next thing that's um, a liability against your business or your personal life or whatever it is. So we work on paying those debts down. At the same time, you're still saving for a rainy day. So you have a little bit of a cushion. That's important too. So you don't want to take all your extra and throw it on this additional debt. You want to stay current and keep paying that bill. And you can, you know, as you pay things off, you just push more money on the next highest thing. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be one or the other. All right. So, hey, Karina Muller, welcome to see you. Um, great to see you. Welcome here. Great mm -hmm. to see you. <laughs> um, so, all right, let's let me just be really open and authentic and, and transparent here about my own situation. So we had a an unusual year, right? We have a done for you agency. A lot of people in the same experience. We have a done for you agency that works with in our world. We work with a lot of surgeons um, and we also have this elite agency thing right here. We teach a lot of programs, masterminds, stuff like that. Um, and and the th Andrew, awesome. Good to see you, man. Uh, hey, um, the thing is, one of those, the done for you side of our business really struggled last March. Like we lost 90% of our income from that in mm. like two hours, right? Yeah. And had to retool, rebuild, reimagine how we could help. And we got back up on the horse and started riding again as the year went on. So that's come back. Mm -hmm. Our training and education programs just took off through the roof mm -hmm. because everybody wanted to reinvest. Everybody's in concentrating on professional development. Yeah. So for me, I'm I'm honestly a uh, great. Yeah, for real. Um, Andrew, this is great stuff. Yeah. Financial clarity oh. is a big pain point. Uh, yeah. So true, Andrew. Thanks for big that. Big pain point. So for me, I'm I'm okay and and feeling really good about cash right now. Mm -hmm. But I'm really I'm really scared still, you know? I mean, yeah. it feels like there's another shoe about to drop and I don't think that's logical. I actually talked to my therapist about this recently. Like how do I get over the fear of this? Mm -hmm. uh, and and she recommended that I do a couple things. One just some mindset stuff of mm -hmm. uh, Okay, I know my ability to sell and my capacity to think of a new idea, my path, capacity to understand and find a market and figure out a way to sell to them. I get that. Uh, we teach a lot of that. That's great. That's a strong point for me. Yay. I can I can lean on that when I'm worried. But even still, like we're we typically travel for four to six months internationally every summer. I don't think that's going to be an option this summer anyway, just from pandemic stuff. But um we're reinvesting in ourselves as a family. I'm buying personally buying professional development for me. Jill's buying professional development for her. We're putting our kids in things that are developing them versus some of the luxury stuff of travel and play mm -hmm. because we're trying to get better at the pivot and not just accumulate more stuff. Right. Is, is that a wise choice? It is wise. Um, and as far as your worry about another sh another foot dropping, I get it. And everybody here probably gets it. Karina um, wants me, yeah, Karina, I'll just travel to Alaska in the summer. That sounds perfect. Oh, it's so beautiful there in the summer. All right. <laughs> so, I mean, the profit first mentality also comes into this in that we're not investing the cash, the extra cash. Um, it, it goes into and we recommend as you're saving to remove the temptation from yourself to spend what you're saving and put it over here in an external bank, let it accumulate interest, put it in a high, high yield savings. So it's still liquid, but it's over here and it's out of your temptation zone. So, um, but it is, you know, it's still accessible. So we aren't, you know, we, we, we encourage investing and everything, but this is a cash, system. So mm -hmm. it's not taking your cash away. It's not saying, Hey, put this over here in a CD and you can't touch it for five years. You have it, you have it yeah. available to you. Um, and that's really strong. Making it a little harder, huh? That's really strong. Cause that builds, yeah. it's nice to know. It, it's you have it's reassuring. It's yeah. super reassuring. Cause I deal with the same kind of anxiety and my, my solution is just to have a plan. Mm -hmm. And so I have a plan. Yeah. And That's it takes the brain, it takes the guesswork out of everything. And you don't have to worry about that piece anymore. You've got a plan, just follow the plan. And sometimes we were talking about what the hardest parts is, are, is following that plan and keep, keep doing that plan. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where another part of where I come in is as, as a profit first coach, I help for accountability as well. I love that. Oh, by the way, um, Roland, uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Ronald. I see you there. I'm looking at my phone so I can see people's names. Um, my wife says I need all the professional help I can get. <laughs> I think as wives, we probably all think that about our husbands or <laughs> partners. <laughs> love the honesty there. Um, so on the cash thing, I remember in, Carrie, you've been in our mastermind. So remember that slide that I showed about that little Ziploc bag with the coins and dollar bills in it yeah. from 2012. And I, I literally every week made a promise to myself that I would say we were so, oh my gosh, so painfully broke. I made a promise to myself that every week I would save some money and every week I would literally put at least 25 cents in that little Ziploc bag. Some, some weeks it was a dollar. I mean, You've seen the picture that's a black bag. It, it does. There's no twenties in there, and yeah. it's a sandwich baggie. It's a change, and yeah. it all adds up. It is. It does. It is valid. Um, that is, and you know, profit first is based on a an envelope system, which is exactly the same thing. Like the author and founder of the whole system is Mike Michalowicz, and his mother budgeted with envelopes. She'd put cash a per certain percentage of her cash and rent. And, you know, once that money was gone for food, they ate beans for the rest of the month or whatever. So it's just compartmentalizing and organizing that money so that you're not overspending on expenses that you may not need. Um, and it, it really helps keep in check your operating expenses. You're still saving for your profit. The profit is where your vacation fund is. Yeah. That's a bonus for being a good owner. I mean, we talked about this last week in the mastermind or at some point in the mastermind, I remember talking about how we, the owner is your VIP. That's, that's your company's best employee Mm -hmm. and we need to be paying ourselves Yeah. because so often as owners or solopreneurs or however you have um, your business set up, we take a backseat and we do it to ourselves. So this is an encouraging system that helps us. If you're not paying yourself anything, 1% is a big increase. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might not be much money and you're like, why would I even take 1%? It is the practice of it. If the practice of those steps really gets into your head and it changes your mindset and you kind of start to see everything differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that in and of itself is powerful for an owner. Really is it, knowing you have a choice and a voice in in the direction you want to set personally. We think of having a voice when we talk about where we are as people in our society. Do I have a voice in our culture? But having a voice in your own head with your own reality is really important. And, and knowing that even if I want to save 25 cents a week, a dollar a week, or if I want to give myself a 1% raise just to, just to do the action. Um, Again, fear is a lot of this too. I like Jill and I just um, booked a a little Airbnb house just for a week. We're going to, you know, we're all doing virtual school. Uh, This is my life right here on the screen. So I take my laptop and yay. Um, Her life is the same way. So, but it was a small thing, but it was a choice to say, we can be free. We can go experience something. We're, we're going to a beach house where there's no city around us. There's no, we're, we're going to order food in. We're not going to be COVID spreaders, we're just going to park it. Um, mm-hmm. But it gave us a feeling of empowerment to know we can breathe. We can stretch. Yeah, we can still do this. Yeah. You and can still get out of your normal routine, even if it's, like I went to the mountains this weekend, yeah. it's two hours from my house, but it was a change in my routine and I was able to reboot and reset and mm-hmm. it was amazing. It was exactly what I needed. So I'm jealous. Carrie, you live near the Rockies. I, I know the drive from your area into the mountains. So I, the, all those roads. It's oh my beautiful. God. It's so oh. beautiful. It is. Oh my gosh. And I mean, I could just pull off when you are, you're on 70 West and it just opens up to this majestic mountain view. I'll just pull off and just watch, just look at it. For real. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. I don't even ski. I just went to the mountains to get out of my apartment. <laughs> I know it's so clean and fresh and everything's beautiful. Yeah. The up there. Air. <sighs> yeah I missed that. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so we need a plan. 
uh, talk about the plan we should be setting as we look at 2021. Does that mean like how much cash I want to have set aside, how much debt I want to pay off, how much I want to pay myself? Like what is a what is a really a big solid plan is to look at your balance sheet, not just your profit and loss, because the profit and loss shows as expense sales and expenses basically. Mm -hmm. But your balance sheet gives you another look at your business. So the balance sheet's going to have your debts, your credit cards, your loans, anything like that. Um, you want to look at your liabilities and your assets as well as your income and expenses. So that's powerful in that it could help you formulate those goals. Like mm -hmm. you can say, oh, shit, I didn't realize <laughs> um, <laughs> I've got this. I pay the loan payment and everything, but I didn't realize I've got a $10,000 loan or $20,000 loan on my business. I probably want to pay that off, but you can still, you can take your profit. I mean, with profit first, the assessment gives us a clear cut path. It gives you an allocation to four different bank accounts that you'd want to set up to compartmentalize your money. Like we've been talking about. And it's all, I mean, the assessments that I do are, all specific to a person's business, like your business is going to look different from mine. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that you can't get in the book, but it, you know, you get an allocation and based on your goals, you can look at your balance sheet and compare. And if you don't know what those things are, talk to a bookkeeper or somebody in my seat that can explain what your finances really look like. And you can set your goals accordingly. So, maybe you want more cash and you don't have a problem paying the minimum balance on that loan. That's fine. That's your choice. That's your goal. And so we formulate your allocation accordingly and you just start doing the work and allocating your income and it builds up fast. Like I started doing this only in like October of last year and I've got a profit build up. Oh, cool. I've got tax savings built up. And the tax, this, this taxes that you're saving for, all of this is owner benefiting. Yeah. So it's not like you're, you're not saving tax sales tax if you have a retail business, um, payroll taxes if you have payroll. Those are operating expenses. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you don't, the tax savings is for the owner's income tax. So I'm saving in case I have an income tax bill. And if I don't, that money is going to go into my profit account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's powerful. I hope that powerful answers the question. I feel like I, I get off track a little bit. No, it's powerful because it, it tells me that the plan that we set isn't just, oh, I want to have three months of expenses in a savings account. Or a plan, but, you know, yeah. but it's, but your, your, your planning is based on first, where are you now? Like what's exactly. the reality now? What does it look like now? Mm -hmm. Because if you've got, a fleet of vans or trucks and you've got, thank you, Sienna, you've Great got um, a hundred thousand dollars tied up in loans for those. Mm -hmm. Maybe it doesn't make sense to save for a Grecian vacation right now. Maybe, you know, you put that on the five-year plan, but you want to get those trucks paid off. Yeah. So you pay a little bit more. It doesn't have to be double the payment. Just pay a little bit more, even if you're rounding it up to the next 50 or rounding it up to the next 10 on your payment, mm -hmm. that makes that makes a big difference in the long run. It does, yeah, you're right. And I can show, I mean, I've got amortization schedules and I can play with numbers and say, hey, you've got five-year loans on all of these, but we could probably pay it off in four years or three and a half years, only if we start paying like $25 extra on your payment. And that's really? not always the case, but it is powerful. Those are really powerful things because the debts we have, the interest rates, I mean, this is a They're depression. so stressful. They, they, oh my gosh. They paralyze owners. Like, yeah. You, you can't get out from under. You're going, I can't, I can't even think because of all this stress and yeah. it doesn't have to be that way. Okay. So ask questions, anybody, if you got them, cause we got Carrie here for an, another couple minutes. The, just to be clear, I don't do affiliates, commissions, none of that stuff. So what and I'm not paid by the profit first people either. Yeah. Just, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm an advocate because it works. It works. Yeah. So what I'm about to say is, is not motivated by anything money for me. The Carrie, you do some live online training stuff. I think you have one coming up this Thursday mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll drop a link to that later. If you want more information on how this stuff works, Carrie does a phenomenal job at walking you through the process and getting your brain around really tactical, practical things you can do. And she's got a training this Thursday. So Carrie, first of all, thank you for offering that to mm -hmm. people who want to jump in there. 
And, and as somebody who used to be a financial advisor, I, I know the, the power of looking into someone else's life and seeing clearly what can be done that they would have never seen. And as someone, yeah. as someone who has a financial situation, like every human on the planet, I know how blind I am to my own situation mm -hmm. and the obvious things I could do to better my own situation. It's so helpful having someone else throw ideas at it and be like, oh, oh. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. I've had owners come to me and they are doing their own bookkeeping and they don't, they, they don't think they need me at all. And I'm like, let's, just, let me just have a look. <laughs> and it's daunting. It's a daunting task to show that to somebody else, but I'm like, okay, this is going to benefit you better. Accurate bookkeeping in, in and of itself is tax savings. If you've got everything lumped into expenses and everything out your, all your income lumped into income, you are, shooting yourself in the foot. <laughs> you need it. And apparently I didn't know this. I thought every bookkeeper did this, but not every bookkeeper classifies all the transactions. They just reconcile accounts. They do expenses and income and they don't really worry about the little pots, mm -hmm. but that in and of itself is tax savings. Yeah, so, and, and just speaking to somebody who is versed in those things can really be an eye opener um, because so many of us don't know what those little accounts mean and what is a liability? What is an asset? I thought, I mean, I thought my business, my business is making money. How come my balance sheet has a, you know, I, my balance sheet only values my business at like 20 grand. Well, because yeah. you've got all of these liabilities. So again, I'm, I'm waxing poetic, but <laughs> <laughs> it's so beautiful. <laughs> um, okay. Let me, um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to, I'm going to put a link to your Thursday training down here so people can sign up. They want to yeah, do that. It's what, free. what time is that? It's at 11 o'clock mountain time. So that would be one o'clock Eastern. Okay. And so, I mean, I could go through the time zones, but I would just get confused. So, yeah. so what time mountain time again? 11 a.m. mountain time. And it's okay. only going to be a half an hour thing. It's okay. a high level look at profit first. It's free. Mm -hmm. And if you register, um, I'm going to be recording it. So I'll send out the recording to everybody who's registered, but I, it's too confusing just to have people raise their hands and say, Hey, I want that. And they don't register and I lose track of it. So yeah, if okay. you're interested, register, even if you don't think you can make it. Awesome. I just dropped that link down here in the chat. Thank you again for that, for just letting us do that here. I, I really, I really appreciate that. The questions about finances and it being a crazy year one way or the other is, is common around here as everybody can feel right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if they just want to reach out and say, Hey, can you, can you answer a quick question for me? Can they reach out to you on Facebook? Absolutely. On Facebook, um, uh, on my website, but probably the easiest for anybody here is on Facebook, just send yeah. me messages and okay. I'm happy to talk. I love to talk, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Yeah. Um, the best reason to have a Facebook group of your own is so you can talk and talk and talk and talk. Yeah. No. Um, now I'm gonna, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, um, I'm going to mention your name in our, in the, in the thing here. Um, let me just go ahead and do that now up at the top. I'm just going to tag you in there. Um, there we go. Um, that way everybody can find you, okay. um, um, and, and make the connection. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, so Carrie, thank you again for doing this back in the end of the year. And again, thank you for having me. This is fantastic. Are you kidding? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So many of us are are doing our agency or our coaching or consulting, helping other people move forward, helping other brands move forward, whatever, because we want a better lifestyle. We became an entrepreneur because we want more money. We want time freedom, money freedom, all this kind of stuff. And you know, we get into the middle of it and realize it's hard and it's messy. Yeah. This is not what I got into business for. Yeah. I don't know what all this means. I had somebody reach out to me last week about sales taxes. She's like, I can't navigate the site. I got in and I actually just did it for free for her because I know her mm -hmm. and she knows she needs my services. So I'm happy to help in little ways. Um, I've got a pretty broad scope as far as what my company offers and I yeah. love help. I mean, I'm passionate about helping people. So I, that shines through loud and clear. Yeah. So Carrie, thank you again for just giving us some guidance and some very practical tips. 
and for offering this Thursday thing so people can yeah, actually dive in and nerd out and geek out a little more to get their finances straightened out. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Great. All right. We'll talk soon. And if we if we get more questions, we'll we'll keep yeah. having you back on. Out. I'm, I'm happy. Fill up my inbox, y'all. Okay. You got it. Thanks so much. Have a great one. You too.